<laughs> what is up you guys and welcome to our last Valhalla Pokemon League upload. Yes, we are in the bronze game. We lost the semi-finals to, well, a tough situation I would say. But uh, in the bronze game I felt really really strong versus Necrostevo. Necrostevo is a player that actually did really well throughout the season. He barely lost the uh, semi-finals himself. And uh, I haven't actually faced him off throughout the whole season. So it was really cool facing off against an opponent that... I didn't know necessarily how he played with his team. Clearly, his team is a rain team, and the team that he brought pretty much felt like the team I was kind of predicting to be able to fend off against. We have Krugadal, Mega Swampert, Ferro Seed, Pelipper, Mimikyu, and Nihilego. Nihilego feels like a really strong lead to get with possibly Ferro Seed. And yeah, my team here is as follows Mesprit, a defensive variant. Um, this was probably the last Pokemon that made a cut, it was either him or um, Kama. Oh, I really felt strongly for Kama for this Wiper Bell, but Mesprit made more sense due to Swampert. Uh, so overall, we have, um, let's see, Hidden Power Fire to be able to deal with Ferris Seed, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and no, Thunderbolt, and then Psyshock uh, in case he brought Gudra, which also was in the roster, to get it with Stealth Rock. So it's a defensive set that are meant to be a possible suicide lead. Its main lead here is actually just to get a rocks to kind of wheel it down Pelipper. So that's the main idea at least. Slowbro here is uh, a Rocky Helmet variant with, um, I believe, Scald, Ice Beam, Grass Knot. Grass Knot mainly here actually to uh, uh, deal with Swampert 1v1. Swampert can't stop Slowbro and Grass Knot is guaranteed KO with the little investment that I have. Other than that, I think Slack Up was the third move I actually decided to take. Jolteon here, Flame Orb Variant with Hidden Power, Grass, uh, Thunderbolt, then Signal Beam to get it with uh, Baton Pass and not Volt Switch. Just in case I actually get the lead way I want to. Signal Beam is mainly there for Crocodile actually, since I decided to... Um, well, since Hidden Power Fire or Ice does or Grass, damn it. <laughs> aren't necessarily doing as much damage and you just need a decent filler. Uh, Mega Dianchi here is a straight on set, able to have speed in a Hilego, uh, has a rock polish to be able to have speed any kind of Pokemon in the ring. Since it had Cabotops too, I knew that that's going to be an aspect that was going to be forced me to deal with in case that hard hog got yet. Luckily, we don't see that. Uh, we have Moobalance, Earth Power, Hidden Power, Fire. Uh, Among Us, Assault Vest variant, close to max special defense, be able to not be hit to it, KO by Pelipper if it is a uh, spec set. Uh, other than that, um, it really doesn't necessarily have any moves that are interesting. We have a Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, and Foul Play. Um, and then I think I filled out with something else I can't necessarily remember. I don't use the other field move in the game anyway, so it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, Scissor is a batted variant close to max attack. I do believe we have 236. The other ones are actually put in its HP and a little bit actually in its... Uh, um, uh, defense is basically able to take hits a little bit better from, I do believe it was Mimikyu and the Jarabolt from Ferris Seed, and uh, be able to actually survive a plus one Earthquake from Swampert if it is a power-up punch set. So really, with all this in mind, uh, let's go into the game. My lead is going to, of course, be Mesprit, and I really hope my opponent leads off with anything but the Crocodile. So right at the start here, I don't necessarily get the strong lead I wanted to, since it started actually off with Crocodile. Now, that said, I have Culverberry. I don't need to worry too much here. I definitely can take any hits you want to throw at me. Now, he's going to show me beat up. And this was something I didn't expect. Um, I do take these uh, six hits quite all right. It's definitely doing over 50%, of course. But I do get my self rocks up. But I felt that, all right, if he has beat up, he's going to go that definitely again. So I'm going to switch in Slowbro, trying to, uh, well, get to receive all the damage I need to the Krukadal. That said, he goes with Stealth Rocks, and I felt, alright, that was, that was really ballsy, definitely if I sack play Mesprit, I would have had a different game here, and he's gonna show me knockoff, and that's actually even worse, um, definitely should have probably gone for to be completely honest for a slack off here, just see how much damage it does, and we barely miss out on the KO, and we don't get the burn, so a lot of, mm, close enough, but not enough, so I'm forced to actually uh, sack my Rexy here, I really thought that was kind of tough. As, of course, it's going to fall, and Mesprit wasn't necessarily super important for the game, but at the same time, it does mean the Swampert got a lot more dangerous now. So I'm going to switch in Dianchi, we we'll already know that uh, it doesn't outspeed anything, it's not a Scarf System, it switches out moves. So I'm going to go for a free Moonblast, and if we switch in his Ferris Seed, combination of Moonblast and Hidden Power Fire are enough to KO a Special Defensive Ferris Seed. 
But he just decided to sack Krugadal, and I thought that was okay. Krugadal did a lot of damage towards my team anyway. And he's gonna switch in Pharisee here. Now my easiest switch in is actually to go to my Among Us. And what I need to do is actually bait him for spikes. That's the only thing I'm going for here, since I felt that it was the easiest way for him to set up a versus me. And I want spikes on his side, because that pretty much guarantee that if he's a Barbieri Berry on his Nihilego, that a bullet, C, a bullet punch will take him out, guarantee. So uh, we get spikes on his, his field, which is awesome. Uh, now clearly I can't risk necessarily anything here, so I'm gonna bring back my Among Us here, predicting him to go for Elite Seer if he like that, and try to get into his mind games. But he actually goes for a Jar Ball here, um, trying to attack it directly, and I'm predicting him, I think, here to um, to stay in. So I went for him Power Fire, trying to force him out, as this time I'm gonna go for uh, Giga Rain, knowing that he definitely will switch out. And he switches to Pelipper, which is awesome, because I said before, since I have an Assault Vest, I am able to take a lot of hits fairly alright. And definitely from the Hurricane, I don't have necessarily Hurricane switching anyway. But uh, Giga Rain is a guaranteed to hit KO from after rocks. And I don't need to worry about Hurricane landing on me, which of course it does. Um, I mean, it's on Arena after all, but we do take it really well. I get confused though, but. Luckily for us, we do break through the confusion and Giga Rain guarantee, of course, kill the Pelipper. Now, the reason I kept going for attacking was because if he roost, it's kind of be negated, and of course, I get more recovery out of if he roosting with, of course, super effective damage. Now, if Swampert comes in. I don't have a proper switch into Swampert. Um, to be completely honest, I'm whittling myself around here trying to just stall for turns, hoping that this was a Scarf set and not a um, Damp Rock set. Uh, as, of course, Mega Ball Swampert is a tremendous threat, to be completely honest. And since I lock my rocket helmet and already got pretty fair resistance to deal damage on my uh, Osma, I'm really aren't that able to take um, or uh, Earthquake as well as I wanted to. So I'm forced to switch back and forth between him and Among Us. And I realize here that my easiest way of actually dealing with Swampert would probably be to actually just force myself to lose a Pokemon. So I was looking at my team and see which one is my most expendable member from this point. And well, that should have been Among Us, but it wasn't, as I decided to actually sack up Van Height. Um, mainly because I don't believe that Pokemon did a lot more damage towards my team anyway. Now with Pelipper gone, uh, I don't believe I was going to get my Flame or activated in any way, and uh, quite frankly, I don't believe that would have mattered. And luckily for us, it isn't a Damp Rock set, so we are able to actually come in now freely. And since Earthquake is nowhere near to guarantee KO, I can go for a Grass Knot here. My opponent will show me Toxic, and that's okay. Pretty much surprised he had that, to be completely honest. But what is unfortunate here is that Grass Knot is close to killing him. It should have been guaranteed KO, but it's uh, actually a bulkier Swampert, and that means that we'll actually lose this kind of fend up. And I thought that was tremendously awful, because we were in a fair spot there. But we just barely lost out on that KO, and while we get Swampert out of the way, the damage to my team was pretty severe there. Uh, that said, we are still a really strong spot. We still have Scissor in mind, and we dealt with the Rain Core, so really aren't that many things that takes on Scissor at all. We are in a good spot here, actually. As I bring in Thenamax, um, now Ferrocede is tremendously awful to be forced to deal with, so I'm gonna go for my Bandit U-turn. And go back to the end, actually. There is no way he's gonna go for a Jar Ball. If anything, he'd probably go for a Lead Seed. And I felt that that was my easiest switch in, just bringing Neptunia. And I can scout for whether or not his Nihilego is Scarf if he brings that in. So I'm gonna go for the Hidden Power Fire. I felt that Nihilego was the easiest switch in here, trying to preserve the Ferris Seed. He doesn't do that, and that's okay. As he's gonna bring in his Mimikyu. And his, here's what I felt okay. I definitely won the game here, didn't I? Because I'm gonna break through um, the um, what do you call it, the disguise, and then it is just wide open for me to just pull it punch away. So uh, yeah, as you guys can see, we are doing tremendously. <laughs> this game went a lot better than I thought it would because tremendous. Consider how the start went. I didn't feel that I was gonna find a lead way to kind of whittle this battle around, but you know. Fidamax, my sister, did get the aspect and of course the rolls in his favor to be actually come in here and do the wrap up. And that's, it felt like the lead way was really, really, well, adjusted for the matchup to be able to do well. Once Robert was gone, there was really nothing stopping Scissor and of course Pelipper being gone also helped. So he's going to bring in Nehalego, and as, like I said it here, with the residual damage there, there really aren't anything that's stopping the bullet punishing from breaking through. He will have the Berberi Bear, however. And he actually survived with one HP. Yeah, that actually happened. I am 
Yeah, I'm trying to be an anticlimactic here. I was just as surprised as my opponent, and hopefully as you guys are, because the roll that was in my favor, even with the reduction bear in mind, was 96% in my favor. So he wins here, actually, 1-0, and a really cool 1-0, to be completely honest, because I think no one was really expected him to win here, because the roll was just so disgustingly not in his favor. But hell, that's the game we play, and that was actually fairly... To be completely honest, very glad to lose this game. It was really a cool twist at the end. So yeah, how cool was that? How? What a way to lose the game. Um, <laughs> to be completely honest though, uh, looking back at the game, I think I had a few plays that I could have made to ensure my win versus this. But at the same time, I don't believe I needed to do those plays because quite frankly, let's face it, that role really, really was in my favor, but I also think, to be completely honest, Necrosteel had really cool sets to be able to win versus me, so I'm, I'm kind of in between here, like, I'm kind of happy that he won, because I think his ideas for this game really was better than my ideas, and I think it was great to see that those were rewarded, definitely the Krugadal set in the beginning, it really threw me off in such a way that I think that it, it was worthy of seeing it go like that. Other than that, of course, the only thing, the play I should have made, or I have two plays I think I should have made, that said, I don't believe any of them would have made sense. Uh, first one being, of course, I should have sacked off Mesprit. I don't believe, like, I tried to get him to, um, of course, try to KO my Slowbro with the, um, with the, what do you call it, beat up, just to get residual damage onto that. I think it was a unnecessary to play like that. Uh, and of course, had I gone for an energy ball, I would have get a hefty chunk on Krugadal before Mesprit that wouldn't have fallen, which would have been guaranteed KO, which wouldn't have built down my slow roll that much. So, I think that aspect stands true. Uh, the other one is, of course, that versus Mimikyu, instead of breaking the disguise with my DNG, I could have sacked with, gladly, of course, um, what do you call it? Uh, my Mongus to... Um, ensure that um, Sister could have survived the Shadow Claw combination with Shadow Sneak. But I think that said, uh, that would of course also ensure that they could outspeed Nihalego and KOS from the, from the ending. Uh, but it would have been too great of a risk, I think, because since it had this guys, uh, he could have easily gone for Sword Stance, and of course if he went for Sword Stance, Shadow Sneak would definitely KO'd and the NG, and I don't believe, uh, or Sister would not have survived that combination of Shadow Claw Shadow Sneak anyway. Um, so I think it was too big of a risk and it wouldn't have made sense for me playing it like that. Uh, because quite frankly, 96% is, in my honest opinion, it's a pretty, it's a decent roll. It's, it's the roll. So, but yeah, you know, it became really anticlimactic and I think it was really cool seeing Nick Restivo coming out on top here because he was pushed to the corner. You know, I had a wrap up game and uh, he managed to survive this red reduction berry and that was really just Quite, quite frankly, and honestly, it was cool to see, and I think it really was giving the game a great twist. So I don't mind losing, and definitely not like that. I think I had a wrap-up game, and I think I did the right series of plays at the end. I just didn't get the wrap-up I think I should have gotten. But at the same time, you know, Nicker C was a very worthy winner, really strong throughout this season, and I was just, to be honest, I was really glad just to be playing him. And... Uh, yeah, this means that the season is over, and that's really, really a load off my shoulder, because this means that I can focus hopefully more on Wi-Fi Bells in the future. And quite frankly, I'm getting a little bit of uh, league tiredness. Um, combination of, of course, having a kid and work and league really are. Um, I'm going to be honest. Um, the planning for the games really are tough. Uh, I have so much little time right now, so. Being able to kind of relax for at least two months here is going to be, well, it's going to be great. Uh, till next season start, of course, then it's all back over again. <laughs> and, and then I look forward to that, of course. Of course I am. It's just, I really want to have some casual battles from here on out. So with that said, make sure to check out Necrostevo's side of this battle. I definitely going to believe that's going to be interesting to see how he viewed this scenario. And also, if everybody's been following throughout the season, thank you for that. I mean, the support has been tremendous. So it's always great to know that people are watching this because they find entertainment value out of it. So with that said guys, thank you for all watching and I'll see you with a Wi-Fi battle very soon. How about that? That's going to be awesome. So with that said guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care.